Hi everybody and welcome finally to the ProBuilder 2.0 launch video. So this has been about six months in the making, uh, just about every month of that, promising next week it would be finished, but we really finally have it done here and are very excited to show off uh, everything that's been put together and of course thank everyone for all their help testing out the betas and such and uh, going through that. So the first thing you might notice is now every Pro Builder object is one single item. Nothing complicated or messed up like it used to be with all those individual bits. And we can also very simply edit things. Just hit the G key on your keyboard. Lots of shortcuts for everything, everything in Pro Builder now. So hit G and you're into editing mode. You can simply click on any face and begin editing it just like so. You can, of course, drag select to get multiple vertices or a single one. You can also hit H once you're in that uh, geometry editing mode, so you can select in uh, the planes themselves. And one thing you'll notice, there's now the uh, ability to swap between plane, local, and global coordinates. So in global, this is just the same, uh, a lot like Unity's global and local uh, item up here, where that will move only in the global coordinates I can move to plane, which is very handy, so I can move it directly on the plane's coordinates. Or local, which is local to the parent object in case it's rotated. So a lot of use for that. So that's the geometry editing. Hit escape to exit the geometry editing, or any mode that is. Hit J to move into the texture editor mode. And here we've got a very nice new texture editor window. You can simply click and select through the standard Unity browser, uh, any texture that you'd like. Let's choose this one here. And you'll get a nice big preview of it. And this will resize depending on your window if you need to get it uh, a better view of it or anything like that. In this panel, we have quite a few handy options. Number one, there is the highlight option. So I can click on a face, and normally it has this bright blue highlight, which you can actually edit, by the way. We'll look into that later. Um, but I can simply turn it off if I need to or back on. So very simple to turn that on and off if you need to. Uh, we have the ability to actually flip the UVs, swap them, move into world space. You can, um, I'll turn off the highlight for this, of course set the scale or basically the tiling of the UVs. And I'll go ahead and apply this so we can see it a little better. So let's say real quick uh, example I wanted this to exactly match this item here. Uh, I can move through here and try and guess it, but luckily I can just look at these squares that I have set up for the basic default. I know it's one, two, three meters tall, so I need this to have a scale of three by three, and then it'll match it perfectly. You can also move the texture around using the offset values here, but there's no need for that anymore really, because you can now simply drag and move, and this is one of my favorite uh, favorite additions to ProBuilder 2.0. It's very simple, but really, really handy. Uh, if you've moved it all over and now you don't know where the heck it should be, of course you can just set these values back to zero or use them and enter in, you know, direct values as you need to. There we go. We have the rotation item, so you can just rotate to any amount. We'll be getting the rotation handle working on that. Right now it doesn't quite yet, but coming in the future for sure. So this is handy especially if you need to align uh, wood grain along something uh, or a uh, pattern, something like that. Lots of uses for it. Underneath that we have the fill mode, and this can be set between tile, normalize, and stretch. Tile is the basic mode. Let's, uh, let's look back at a item that has a tiling texture here. And then I can change it to normalize. Now what that will do is just stretch the texture completely to fill that entire uh, this entire face on this object. So it won't stretch the texture at all actually, it'll simply enlarge it without doing any kind of distortion. If you change it to stretch, it'll actually stretch the texture and make it fill the, uh, the face that way. Below that we have the projection, which can be useful in certain cases, but you'll probably never use. If your UVs go crazy, give this a look. Make sure it's on auto, otherwise uh, pretty much leave it alone unless you're definitely sure what you're doing there. Uh, anyway, it is available, so let's hit escape and exit texture editing and take a look at the shape creation tool. So this is another of my favorite new additions. It allows us to create uh, multiple types of objects, which you can set parameters on. 
so that they come in exactly as you want and can be edited, especially uh, more than just a regular cube. So for example, this there, we have steps, width, height, depth, uh, different options for how it's actually built. So you simply set those up and click build stairs and there you have them. And these can be edited exactly like any other object. No difference. So very handy for building specialized items. The plane is also one that has quite a bit of promise. So you can move this around, build more organic structures with this. And we do intend to have full um, hammer displacement style uh, where you can paint these vertices up and down and then also vertex blend and vertex paint, all sorts of uh, awesome things with that. So that's basically the shape tool. Uh, below that we have the merge item. So with this you can take multiple ProBuilder boxes and simply merge them into one. It'll give you the option to save or delete the originals. And if you choose save, you'll notice the old ones end up just grayed out in your hierarchy. Okay, below that, simply a group, uh, a grouping button, which will just make a hierarchical group out of a selection. So it can be handy at times. So we thought we'd add that in there in case uh, people want to just a quick shortcut to it. Then we have the prefabs option. So we, uh, you can finally create prefabs from any of the items that you build. So for example, if I wanted to create a prefab of this here, just hit the prefab button with it selected or multiples. One thing you do have to use the prefab button. You can't just uh, drag and drop as usual or else things will break. So make sure you use that there. Uh, now, if I create a duplicate of this or if I were to just drag in the prefab, it's now going to, uh, or all its other instances will reflect its movement. So this can be very, very handy. Um, just whenever you're building things that you need lots of items are going to be acting exactly the same. Uh, below that again is the light mapping, which will light map your scene. I'm sorry, set up the scene for light mapping. It just generates all the UV2s and also fixes any issues. If, for example, let me try and break something here. There we go. If your light maps break at some point, or appear to anyway, just clicking that button will reset them. Below that, we have the last item, which is the Viz Groups panel. And this is really handy. It's a way for you to just quickly turn on and off different types of, uh, we call them entities in your in your scene. So for instance, if you have no draw, you can now toggle that on and off. You can toggle on and off any collision volumes. And the same for any trigger volumes right through here. Uh, if you have special setup world or detail items, and this is something that Hammer users will recognize, but everyone else will probably want to take a look at the Viz Groups tutorial to understand what these are. But basically, you can toggle them on and off just the same as you would any of the others. So this really helps when you're building up and you have a very complex scene. You'll find quickly that this is, becomes uh, favorite tools for sure. We have a couple other items hidden up in the Window Pro Builder uh, actions menu. And then we have a couple extra options. We can export any amount of items to OBJ, which I know a lot of people are really looking forward to. Uh, we have the awesome new set pivot option, which was actually gen uh, generously donated by Matt1988 from the 6x7 forum. So thank you very much, Matt. Uh, this is a great way to just quickly reset the pivot on objects. And you can even select an individual vertice. So if I select, for example, this one right here, and then go to Window, Pro Builder, Actions, Set Pivot. That is now the pivot of this item. So that comes especially in handy when you want to rotate items around a certain point. Uh, going back to this, we have the Auto No Draw, which, as it says, beta exclamation point. It works for the most part. It's definitely handy. It'll help you um, no draw all these inside, inside areas here. Another great addition to ProBuilder 2.0 is the ability to set all the editor preferences right from the preferences menu here. So just open up Edit Preferences and then choose the ProBuilder tab and you'll see you can actually customize just about every single uh, shortcut, whether it's a key or even if it has a modifier or anything like that, you can modify 
uh, or customize the selected face color, the default selection mode. Uh, and that's basically it. You can reset to defaults in case you break everything, but uh, this is definitely a handy option to have. Once again, uh, keyboard shortcuts, uh, we knew that was a big thing missing from Pro Builder 1.0, so just about everything has a keyboard shortcut now, and they're customizable. So that's really about it for Pro Builder 2.0, at least showing off the fancy things on the surface. Tons and tons of improvements uh, under the hood, obviously. It's much more efficient, um, especially with the ability to merge. It's a single object per uh, Pro Builder item now, instead of all those multiples. Much harder to break because of that as well. Um, all sorts of items, obviously, under the hood. So we hope you enjoy it. Definitely go and take a look at uh, all the great art made by uh, other users. It's, you can see it on the showcase at ProBuilder3D.com. Uh, There's also the free download you can pick up there. And, of course, you can just go ahead and purchase it on the uh, CG Cookie Store or Unity Asset Store. Either way, that works for you. So thanks, everyone, for taking a look. And, of course, let us know if you have any thoughts.